Welcome back! My name is Baller Scuba. This is Video Games Over Time. We are still in 1976, and today we're going to talk about some of the other things going on in the video game industry in 1976. We will start with some behind the scenes looks at Atari. Having another success on their hands with Home Pong, Atari began an effort in 1975 to create their own consoles. They were able to release their own version of Home Pong in 1976, but Atari wanted a single console that could play all Atari games. The breakthrough came with the release of the most technology 6502 chip, which was mentioned in our video about 1975. In the 6502, Atari found the product that would fit their needs and pushed production of their new console. Meanwhile, Nolan Bushnell was still dealing with the lawsuit from Magnavox. Bushnell's lawyer thought that Atari could win the lawsuit, but he estimated that the legal costs would amount to $1.5 million. $6.8 million in 2020. That was too much for Atari to pay. Magnavox offered a settlement where Atari would become a licensee for $700,000. $3.2 million in 2020. Under this agreement, Magnavox would also obtain the rights to all Atari products developed over the next year. In June 1976, Atari accepted the offer and settled out of court. Magnavox then continued pursuing legal actions, but this time went after other companies, particularly the ones that had made Pong clones. So Atari began focusing on their new console. Nolan Bushnell thought that he had another hit on his hands, but he needed capital to produce it. So Bushnell sold Atari to Warner Communications, an American entertainment company, for $28 million in September 1976, $127 million in 2020. As part of the deal, Bushnell would stay in the company, acting as chairman. But Atari's console would not be released in 1976. So let's look at the consoles that were released that year. Coleco, an American toy company, started releasing the Telstar series of consoles. The name Coleco comes from a shortening of its original name, the Connecticut Leather Company. In 1976, Coleco released two consoles, the Coleco Telstar and the Coleco Telstar Classic. Both consoles were essentially the same. They played the same three games, all Pong variants, had the same general design and the same fixed paddles. The classic edition, however, had a wood case. Coleco would sell about one million of the original Coleco Telstar consoles. Magnavox continued to release their dedicated Odyssey console line in 1976. The first console, the Magnavox Odyssey 300, was meant to compete with the Coleco Telstar. The Odyssey 300 played the same three games as the Odyssey 200, with some slight changes to the controls and the addition of three difficulty levels and on-screen scoring. The next console, the Odyssey 400, was an updated version of the Odyssey 200, playing the same three games with the same three control dials, but now with on-screen scoring. The Odyssey 500, the third console of the year, was an upgraded version of the Odyssey 400. It featured color graphics, replaced the paddles with sprites, and added a fourth game, soccer. In November 1976, Fairchild Camera and Instrument released the Fairchild Video Entertainment System. The console is better known by its subsequent name, the Fairchild Channel F, short for Channel Fun. This console cost $169.95, over $770 in 2020. The Channel F consisted of a base unit with an Intel 8080 microprocessor and interchangeable circuit boards that could be plugged into the base unit. This makes the Channel F the first cartridge-based console in total, 27 cartridges, named video carts, would be released for the Channel F. Most of these carts would play multiple games, and nearly all of them sold for around $19.95 each, roughly $90 in 2020. 
However, the console and its games were not well received at the time. By 1977, the Fairchild Channel F only sold around 250,000 units, despite an additional release in Japan. These consoles were far from the only home consoles released in 1976. In total, over 70 home consoles hit the shelves that year. Of the consoles we have not mentioned, most played Pong. The market was flooded with consoles, especially in the United States, where over half of those consoles that year were released. And it started becoming clear that the market was getting oversaturated. With the console market nearing seeming impending doom, let's turn to video games. There is one other video game we will mention that was released in 1976. Unfortunately, it's not for particularly good reasons. On April 1st, 1976, Exidy, an American amusement company, released the arcade game Death Race. Inspired by the 1975 movie Death Race 2000, this simple game allows players to drive a car into humanoid figures, named goblins by the arcade cabinet, killing them before moving on to the next figure. This game got national attention due to the inherent violence of the game. Even though most of the coverage was negative, the attention increased the sales of the cabinet. This was the first time that video game violence would reach national news, but it would not be the last. As a whole, three and a half million games were sold in 1976. The video game industry earned $242 million in revenue, over $1 billion in 2020. Atari, with Nolan Bushnell at its head, is still the biggest name in the industry. However, due to the settlement with Magnavox, anything that would be developed and released by Atari between June 1976 and June 1977 would profit Magnavox. So, Atari hid their projects from Magnavox and did not have any major releases in the second half of 1976. And that, from a video game perspective, is 1976. My name is Baller Scuba. This has been Video Games Over Time. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in 1977.